Welcome and welcome back, fellow fans of Clash of Clans. It is your host, Galadon, and it is another epic day of epic attacks. And I'll tell you right now, I don't think you guys could guess the outcome of these attacks if I paid you. Oh, wait a minute. I am paying you. That's right. This is your chance to win a gold pass. I've got all sorts of gift cards. And as you know, the tradition is get these right. Get your shots at winning that gold pass. Because again, I give out tons. Thanks to use code Galadon. No fancy segue right here. Just know that about half of everything I get from the creator code goes to charity and to you guys in the big giveaways. So if you get a chance before you make any purchases, please do scroll on down to settings, more settings, type in G-A-L-A-D-O-N, and that's it. It works for seven days. We can get on with the episode, get on with our lives, and get on with these insane attacks. Now, I will tell you a special episode today because it's not just Galadon attacking. In fact, I only have the first attack. We're going to move on to other players for the next two attacks, and I'll tell you right now, this is is going to be the most difficult probably to guess i'm just saying it's going to be tough you may be surprised so keep that in mind as we get deeper into this legend league attack and yes i know we're using queen charge hybrid which you see me use constantly at town hall 14. so again another reason why it'll be fun to watch these other attacks because we're going to see two other attack strategies that well some people love and some people hate but just wait a minute for that. Okay, so here we go. Obviously, what happened here was I attacked from the far side of the town hall. And I'll, I'll be honest with you guys. My goal was to make an episode about me doing the opposite of what I think I should normally do. And a normal attack, I would go right after this on the right-hand side and go right after the town hall. So I thought, hey, let's be crazy. We're in Legend League. It's early in the season. It doesn't matter that much. I'll start from the left and... You know, maybe it'll work out, maybe it won't. Obviously, we've gotten the Town Hall down. We're closing in on the three-star, but keep a close eye on that single Farget and Turnoa. And, of course, the Hog Riders going in and getting, that's right, triple giant bombed. Triple giant bombs go off, and the Hog Riders are annihilated. The Archer Queen, however, is still alive. And notice at the top of the screen, you've got a gang of wizards. That is right, or is that called a cloak? What is a group of wizards called? I actually don't know. But here we go. Archer Queen. Yes, she is not long for this world. Inferno Tower does its job, unfortunately. But of course, if we can survive the splash from the mortar, and we do, the wizards are definitely going to have the upper hand on this Inferno Tower. Notice the time counting down. It's getting close. We are going to get through the last builder hut on the outside and then work on the wall. Again, looks like it's going to be close but maybe you know that a bunch of wizards do pretty well against a single target inferno so we'll freeze it right here and it is time to guess 99 or 100 you make the call get it right and the other two and get your shot at a gold pass we resume at super slow motion and the score base designer one galadon zero as the spring traps and the bombs end this attack and we fail. Thank you, all of you that guessed 100% because Galadon never fails. But Galadon's wizards apparently sometimes do. Okay, for the second attack of the day, we are going to a recent tournament battle between Tribe Gaming and Space Station Gaming. It is none other than Nebrax versus Lexnos. And if you are a big fan and follow tournament play, then maybe, just maybe, you've got the inside answer to this one and you already know the outcome. Did you pay attention? All right, so let's watch because, again, it is a different attack than what we're used to seeing in these episodes. We've got dragons. We've got the blimp coming in after that town hall. A freeze spell strategically placed to make sure the blimp gets in, dropping its deadly payload of super wizards, and then a couple of excellently timed and placed invisibility spells means that the town hall goes down. Notice the earthquake spell left over probably insurance to make sure he could wipe out the town hall now nebrax is going to use it on that one expo and there you go expo down the rest of the attack can really begin this becomes a funnel at the bottom of the base notice the dragon moving in here and clearing that entire six o'clock region and as we wait for the rest of this attack to get underway i just wanted to point something out two builders one inferno tower if they can do it repairing then why can't they do it building? Come on, Clash of Clans team. Give us 
two builders working on one building. And what I mean is, imagine you've got an upgrade that takes 10 days, you put two builders on that upgrade instead of one, and it gets done in five days. Yes, 300 IQ idea, not my own, but definitely something the community has been asking for for a long time, and I hold out hope that it's actually possible that we could see that in a future update. I think it makes sense. Okay, so the dragons are moving in. Notice the heroes at the top of the screen. They're kind of completing the funnel on the far side of the dragons, and they're just fighting that one air sweeper next to the eagle artillery. And if you haven't guessed by now, you'll notice that this attack began right about at the three minute mark. Dragons are very slow. And yes, this could come down to a matter of time as the heroes work their way around the top of the base. Notice that Nabrax has not dropped his royal champion yet. The royal champion along with Lasse is gonna move in from the top of the base. And is it too late to drop them? Here they go. Gonna work on a bunch of defenses and actually the royal champion is nearly single-handedly going to wipe out the rest of the defenses on this base but it's going to come down to one final confrontation, and that is going to be the face-off between the Royal Champion and the final multi-target Inferno right there near the bottom of the base. So watch as the Royal Champion uses the ability, moves in just about through every defense, just three defenses left now, now two defenses left, and here it comes, the final battle, Royal Champion versus Inferno Tower, and we're gonna pause it right now, Time to decide, 99 or 100, you make the call. The villager is absolutely mortified. Can Nabrax pull it out as we go to super slow motion? It doesn't get much closer than this. Royal Champion, Inferno Tower, Inferno Tower, Royal Champion. One more shot, should do it, doesn't do it, needs another, and she cannot get the job done. She fails, and that pretty much seals the deal on this attack. The final dragon trying to get there. 95%, the final 15 seconds about to click off this attack. Could the dragon possibly be the hero and get it done? Is there a seeking air mine in the way? Well, no, it doesn't matter because as you can see, time is running out and they are so far away. It might as well have been all the way across the village because no chance. Unfortunately, Nabrax ends up with a 99% and could today's episode be all 99s? Get ready as Lone Wolf from my own clan, use code Galadon, aka Legend, is about to drop the major, major E-Dragon spam right here. Kind of a Sui hero E-Dragon. He calls himself a spam professional. That is a professional spammer. And he's going to roll in. And will he crush this base? Well, we know he's going to end up at at least 99% because of that superior spell timing and placement and the heroes wiping out the town hall, pulling out the clan castle and clearing the way for the remainder of the balloons and E-Dragons coming in from 12 o'clock. Notice the wall wrecker right there getting in deep and dropping its payload of balloons right on top of that air defense. And like I say, air is so strong right now. Any air attack is going to be super strong against these bases that have so many ground set expos. And of course, we don't see the new levels of Archer Towers, Wizard Towers, and air defenses coming to the game yet. Although with the way that air is dominating right now, I would not be surprised if there is a balance update or just another content update that brings us those new defense levels. All right, doesn't look so good right now, right? We've got two Electro Dragons remaining and that air defense going to town right here. I should stop it. I should make you guess right here. From here on out, what do you think? But I'll give you a little bit further. Watch the key chain lightning on the right side Electro Dragon that is reaching all the way out and taking down that last air defense. Here it comes. There it goes. And that makes a huge difference. But again, two electro dragons remain the expo is set to ground that certainly made a difference in this attack we're getting closer about a minute left in this one and that's right only a single air targeting defense remains right off the screen at the top of the base lies in wait the infamous archer tower of agamemnon or or of of this player here I, either way it's going to be a key defense right here as the electro dragons move in and it's just about that time should I go ahead and make you guys guess, say, right here? What do you think? If you had to guess, okay, I'll give you I'll give you a few more seconds. We'll play it out a little bit more, but get ready because we're about to lose one of the Electro Dragons. It's going to be one Electro Dragon against the final six buildings. So as we freeze it, 
99 or 100, will the villager help you? Does she supply a hint or is she misguiding you? Is she just sad because the video is almost over? Watch it as the Electro Dragon works its way. But yes, these buildings are a little bit too far apart for the Chain Lightning to work. It comes down to the final confrontation once again. E-Dragon versus Archer Tower and with the Archer Tower down, the E-Dragon moves in with five seconds remaining in this attack. Guess what? Do you know yet? Do you see what is about to happen right here? Huh? Do you know? Should I just show it to you? Okay. There you go. E-Dragon wins. That's right. If you guess a three-star 100%, then you got it right. If you got them all right, stop by the Facebook live stream tonight, and maybe you will win a gold pass. Thank you, Galafam, for sticking around all the way to the end of the episode. You know you are the true hashtag, Galafam. That's why I love thinking about it. I appreciate every single one of you every single day. So get out there, make the best of the rest of your day. Be kind to the people, animals, and the planet, and I will see you back here again tomorrow for more full attacks. If you could have ticked as fast as you talk, maybe you'd get more three stars.